And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Twisted Swain. We're going to be playing a tier one deck here with Bilgewater Noxus. Um, we have been getting beaten up a little bit with some off the wall decks recently. We're going to be playing a tier one deck for a time and then we're going to play a couple other of cool different decks. Um, but yeah, this one's really good. Of course, we have we have our two champions, Twisted Fates, Wayne. Um, you know, they're awesome. There's a lot of Nexus damage in this deck um, and just a, a lot of value. We're going to be going with just two Salvage. Most people play three, but I really wanted to get three Sprayfin in here and I wanted to play two Riptide Rex. So I wanted to play a good amount of both of those so that we, we are going to be trimming a Salvage to be able to fit both of those in. Noxion Guillotine is an important card to be playing at this at this time with all of the large units like your Trundles running around. Uh, I think we need to have a Noxion Guillotine in there for that, but... Let's just go ahead and get to the games. Let's play some Twisted Swain. We're gonna go play five games over in ranked like we always do with each deck. And let's see how these games go. What's up, Donut Man? How's it going? Hey, talk about a Trundle deck. We're playing against Trundle Sejuani. And so kind of explaining how this game goes also. Um, so as you can see, so we're, we're playing best of one, but with your mulligan, all right. So your mulligan decisions, you get you get four cards in your opener, as you can see, and you can you mulligan the cards individually. So I wanted to keep these two cards. I didn't want those other two. I mulligan those two. So you can sculpt your hand pretty well, but you also know what you're playing against. You know what like the champions, which are like the mythics. You know like what your opponent's playing and what regions they're playing. So you can make a, a mulligan decision. You can kind of tell if they're playing aggro or control, or you know you know what they're playing while you're mulliganing. So you don't just um, so it's not like best of one in Magic where you don't know if your opponent's playing blue-white control or mono-red aggro and you keep all your cards that are good against mono-red aggro and then they're playing blue-white control. You can sculpt your hand better. Um, I'm not going to offer the trade actually. We're just going to pass turn. Alright, so Weirding Stones. That's going to be ramping them. You can get rid of one Spiderling and get rid of one health from that Weirding Stones. Definitely wish we had Ravenous Flock to finish that thing out. So yeah, so I didn't use that two mana, so we have that two mana saved. Oh, there's Ravenous Flock. Um, yeah, let's do that now. And then if they play a Trundle, we can stun the Trundle and attack. The mana that you can save can only be used for spells, though. So not like a not a unit, not a creature. Alright, gonna draw an extra card with this Twisted Fates. Kind of start the level up process for that. Also dig deeper into the deck. Guessing this is Vile Feast, yeah. Looks like trouble. And this game's not that old yet, since there's been there's been one main set and then you know a couple of more additional sets, two two other additional sets, but it's still not that old and it wouldn't take that long to um, learn the metagame and all that kind of stuff. It really wouldn't. All right, so turn five. Bow to no one. Hmm. All right, so I guess we're just going to stun the Sejuani to keep my Twisted Fate alive, and then we'll just cast Salvage as well. So Twisted Fate is now at four out of eight for leveling up. And turn eight cannot get here fast enough. Don't really love any of my options. I don't love just going two petty officers. I'd be very poor against an avalanche. What if I just pass? It's not like any of my cards are that great to play. I wonder if they will... 
They will not allow us to pass. I definitely wish I had a spell that dealt damage so we could just get a bunch of powder kegs and use whatever spell that would do damage. Born a patrician, I became a soldier. Next turn still turn seven. We need, it, we need next turn to be turn eight. Start playing our eight drops. Alright, Trundle levels up. We're going to stun that Trundle. Don't want Trundle to kill Swain. Ride onward. Please don't have Avalanche. If it's Ice Quake, at least that kills Sejuani. That is one of the best one drops we could hit. And that's unfortunate. Our Twisted Fate's gone. Kind of needed that card. Kind of needed that card. Destination in sight. All right, Leviathan, save us. That's scary. Really needed some kind of spells this game instead of like these double deckhand, or sorry, double petty officer, deckhand, house spider, those kind of cards. Definitely need some spells. Born for conquest. Get ready for a beatdown. We're going under. GG's. I refuse. All right, playing against Sejuani again, this time with Ash. I like this mid-range Frostbite deck quite a bit. And I kind of like our hand. It's very slow. Nice and controlly. I think this could be a really good matchup for Noxian Guillotine. Wondering how they're going to rebalance Petty Officer? That's a good question. Petty Officer has made the... Um, it has... It kind of seems... It, 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 what am I trying to say? Okay, so I'm trying to say that it has made a metagame where going, going big is a lot easier than going small. It's hard to play a small deck, as we saw with the Nocturne Nightfall, where we played against tons of petty officers it's hard to play a deck that's small and then they play petty officer on turn three it's really hard to get through that where if you're playing a bunch of avalanches and go really big with trundles like our previous opponent that's much easier to do against petty officer for now we're going to lead with a spray fin and so we have some more information of whether we want to get the powder keg or the random one cost follower. Let's do this. What if Petty Officer just always brought a powder keg? But what if it was like Dreadway Deckhand, like you didn't get the choice? Not and ready. Good. My arrow 
won't miss. You got legs. Use them. All right, gonna try to make a rain these things away. All right, cool. So the powder keg basically traded with the Omen Hawk's abilities with the plus one, plus one from before. So they have six mana. Hey, <laughs> we got the same one drop. All right, let's go right to attacks. So there's no double blocking in this game. Everything attacks and and blocks in like um, uh, in like lanes, and it, damage happens from left to right if things change throughout damage. Gotta go with the flow. So Sprayfin draws a random spell from your deck that costs three or less mana. Something I don't think I don't really have a card like that in Magic. So like any, you know, it's not a unit, but always a spell. But it's, it's random what it gets. All right, so this isn't, yeah, it's not nowhere close to leveling up. We'll use a Death Sand here, and then it, uh, we'll be able to Ravenous Block now that it's damaged. And do the additional four. No, there's no kind of graveyard. You can see what has this little uh, thing here. It can You can see what's been played previously, but there's no kind of graveyard. There are cards that you can, that can still bring back things that have died, like, like either ran, you know, like a card that will uh, put back into play something that, like a random card that died this turn and things like that. Or, so like it's a revive mechanic. There's a mechanic called revive. You can revive like any champion that died randomly, but um... no specific graveyard. Victory requires a sharp blade. All right, and Riptide Rex, perfect time. They took damage this turn, so this is turned on. Seven cannon barrages. The first one will kill the Glory Seeker, and then all six of these will do damage to them. They have this eye here that you can you can uh, mouse over and it tells you what's going to happen. So like in combat, you can you can check like the combat math and stuff like that, and, and it tells you what's going to happen. All right, GGs. Lisa and Lux. I played Lisa and Lux the other day, and went five and zero with it. That was sweet. I wonder if this is the same uh, list for Lee and Lux. So we'll mulligan our eight mana card. You know, don't really need that in our opener. I think these spells are just fine. We'll keep those. Um, no, there's there's definitely card draw. Um, we played one earlier of like a four mana draw two. Um, there's there is card draw, but. Um, our opponent is going to be playing a deck that's much more spell heavy. Um, like they're both these champions care about spells, you know. Not and spells are you know like there's like units and spells. Like spells don't count units or you know creatures. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's my dog Harvey in the background. She's rolling around. She likes doing that. So that's a six mana spell. So turn three, they get a, a huge unit, a five five tough already. I wonder if I should be playing the deck hand. Because they didn't spend their mana from turn one or turn two. We're gonna keep stunning this. Now we can hopefully attack with all this. Soldiers, oh, that's a good card. 
Meet them head on. Huh? I was expecting that to block the two two, to be honest. So how are we gonna deal with this thing? So we can get a powder keg. Only I can endure the dragon's fury. I've worked up something special. Maybe we do that and then make it rain? Let's see. If I go de I could go Death's Hand plus Ravenous Flock and kill that thing that's tough. I will not hold back. Hey Carter. All right, we're gonna get a second powder keg. So this thing's gonna be doing three damage. Hopefully it hits all of their... Oh, it didn't hit Lee Sin. Okay, well we... Take out both of those, we'll still have Lee Sin. I wonder if they're challenging. Like, if I pass, I wonder if they pass. I'm gonna just play this thing right now. I don't really want them to pass, also. Alright, GG's. Two and one. Alright, playing against the real big deck again. This is where we can struggle because they can go over the top. So this is Trundle, Aurelian Soul. Um, this is kind of difficult, because like Petty Officer is usually like one of our very best cards, but Petty Officer against a deck with Avalanche with Sweepers, which Avalanche is Pyroclasm, makes that more difficult. Like, so I don't know, Like none of these are that... Um, I mean, I, I guess we just have to... I think we just have to keep Petty Officer. None of those are like that appealing. We do have some late game power with Leviathan in particular, but it's just these early turns are kind of rough. Maybe they don't have an avalanche. I need more Is that possible? No avalanche, please. These are So Mega Rain will do two damage because of the Powder Keg. And then we'll be able to Ravenous Flock for four. Alright, that's big, getting that out of here. And I'm not overextending into Avalanche by playing another two health unit. Hmm. Footprints here. Me smell something. All right, we'll go Damn red card man. plus that sand to take out one of something these. For all. Wow. Right. Haven't seen that before. Never seen the turn five triple troll scavenger. My best play is probably like stun flock kind of thing. It's just how much do I really want to play into avalanche? I mean, I 
I guess we're gonna just play into it. If I just attack out, I'm, I'm doing four damage. It's not that much damage. So this does seven damage, that's better. Yeah, my droid. Yeah, I remember that. All right, we got salvage. We got draw two. Definitely a good time for that. What we get? Sentry and make it rain. Make it rain almost kills them. I'm gonna cast this make it rain right now. I want to do damage to the either babbling Bjerg or them or both. Very nice. I'm just gonna cast that right now. All right. So yes, they're healing their nexus for five. And starting next turn, we get to start dropping Leviathans. Heed my words. So they do have a trundle or something big. We get to stun it. Is a mountain and covered in ice. All right, so they we know that. So they have th five cards in hand. We know two of them were grabbed with Babbling Bjerg. So two of them are units with five plus power. And one of them would, they just grab from the star shaping, so something else that's um, pretty big like that. So we're gonna have some. They're gonna have some big stuff. I mean, I guess I should have had that do the two one instead. So a really in soul is pretty likely. Biggest, baddest champion in the game, 10 mana. But they're at four. And round start, they take three. So you get one more damage across. So Leviathan's vulnerable, they're gonna be able to challenge, and so they're gonna be able to kill Levi this, my Leviathan. The question is, is do I go with another Leviathan? We're going under! Or do I go Sprayfin? And try to draw a spell that does a damage. The only way they kill they get rid of this Leviathan is like silence. If I pass and then they pass, is that good for me? Yeah, that's probably good for me. Yeah, we could have Sprayfin Swain or Sprayfin plus Salvage. And that could really dig for a spell that does a point of damage. Kind of expecting another star shaping. By expecting, I mean, that'd be the best thing they could have, most likely. So three more mana. For conquest, for empire. They have to have Equinox. If they don't have Equinox, they're dead. No, no, don't have Equinox. That's quite well, that doesn't matter. That hushes for this turn, but this is a round start. Fire! There we go, GG's. I thought that was Equinox, I was... I was like, no! And now they're 2x. Ooh, okay, Soul Raiders. So you think there should be a card that like cleanses any debuff spell? So like an anti-hush or an anti-purify. Man, I feel bad for my opponent. Because we just played this deck against like our kind of deck a bunch and we just saw a bunch of petty officers. It was really hard to fight through petty officers. And now we're just the bad guys on the other side. We were peaceful once. We just have double Petty Rise. Officer against them. But, so
So like, would that be strong enough to actually put into your deck? Like, would you actually put into your deck a card that um, that get, got rid of debuffs? Because it would do nothing most of the time, unless only unless your opponent's playing like you know Hush or Purify. You don't. It's our time. Legion rear guard. I'll do better this time. This time. Leave me no recourse. If only a fool would enter battle unprepared. I need more eyes. It might. Oh man, Omen Hawk is so good. I wouldn't wouldn't be minding the powder keg too much. Omen Hawk is so good. <laughs> that's that's what happened to us. It was Omen Hawk into three three spray fin that just dominated our two threes. Exactly what happened to us on the other side. Find your own light within the darkness. Find your path in the dark and follow no false light. We're gonna make sure to take down Diana. Diana's gonna challenge the spray pin. Gonna make sure to take it down. Where, if, you know, I could have gone make it rain, see if we hit it and then flock, but you know, if we don't hit it with make it rain, then we're in trouble. No more hiding. Yeah, you'd be able to unstun and unfrostbite your cards. That's true, you could do that kind of stuff. Master your demons. Maybe I should be going sentry plus flock. Kinda like saving sentry for their turn against like a nocturne. Choosing, okay. I've never played against an opponent has who has whiffed on that card. I've whiffed a few times. Dusk approaches. We are at war. Through the coral. I will break them. Raise your weapon, Sunwood. Do this first. You kind of feel like this is going to be a Nocturne at turn. Alright, good. I dealt the damage to Diana like I wanted. So I can flock, grab and flock Diana. Could definitely be Cygnus. Yeah, Cygnus is also another good call. I like, I like keeping this done. Down with the sickness. Discipline and conviction. After the battle of the Russians. Still play Nocturne if that's Nocturne. Her 
flowers bring the moonlight. I'm playing Diana Nocturne. Yeah, I had to wait. I was so patient until the very end, and I even said that if that last card was Nocturne, I should have just waited. Yeah, I I went I was greedy. I went for like the killing them. You know, I didn't. St I stunned the the elusive so I could kill the elusive so that like my three won't be able to kill them. But I'm gonna have to block this three one anyway. At least I would have had to. Justify yourself. At least we're not dead. So we should still be fine. Thanks to Omen Hawk making the Saffiros and Sentry a four three. Now we have Rip Tyrex. I'll put him down to one. a better way for me to play that turn. Maybe like Noxion Fervor first and then Riptide Rex. Is the one true light. Prepare the cargo. There is no excess. If they would have had something that dealt one damage to me, of course I would have been able to respond with Fervor. But I don't need to. Praise the Noctora. Should have just gone Leviathan and Swing. Day. Yeah, that probably would have been better. All right, GGs though. When you're ahead like that, you can don't need to have the prettiest way. All you gotta do is clean up the game, and we cleaned up the game and just fine. Um, so yeah, these Bilgewater Noxus cards are pretty awesome, very powerful. Uh, yeah, as we as we saw that it's hard to play small units against these kind of decks with uh, Powder Keg, Make It Rain. That makes things a lot you know like really difficult and you know you have your other removal with that sand and fervor and just all that kind of stuff um and obviously red card once you start having red card gold card all that kind of stuff with twisted fate and then yeah we got our super powerful top end too with rex and leviathan and a swain so this deck has it all i think it can't struggle against decks that go much much bigger and especially that have like ramp into some bigger stuff real quickly but that's what we lost against. It was a deck that had a, a fast Sejuani, and then then Trundle, and and that kind of stuff. Going underneath this kind of deck is pretty tough. With all this removal, it, it is pretty pretty difficult. <clears throat> yeah, I don't I don't know if anything's going to change with this deck. I could definitely see something changing. I don't know exactly what. I've talked about Riptide Rex, Petty Officer, maybe being a little too strong before. I don't know. I don't know what they would do. But anyway, that's it here for Twisted Swain. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. Let me know what you think about this deck. If, if there's anything you would change with, if you were doing the balance patches, if you would update any of these cards, you'd nerf anything here in this deck um, or anything like that. If you've been playing it, how's it, how's it going? All that kind of stuff. Love to see those comments. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.